If you exist in this culture, you likely have heard of what intermittent fasting is. It has become so popular over the years that your family, your coworkers, other people in your life might be talking about it, might be talking about the benefits or the health benefits of it. And you might be wondering, one, what is intermittent fasting? And two, should I be doing this? Is this actually healthy? Or is this just another part of diet culture's recommendations? Part of existing in diet culture means that you are inundated with messaging around what you should and shouldn't be eating. And in the case of intermittent fasting, the hours that you are not supposed to be eating food. This often leads people and this may have happened to you to thinking that they need to be fasting for longer than they are already fasting while they're sleeping and also can seem really attractive. There's so much that's said about intermittent fasting in regards to supposed health benefits that can start to make you think, maybe this is for me, maybe I'm doing it all wrong. So if you're in this case, if you're feeling like, should I be following this diet, but I'm not really sure about it, and so-and-so is talking about it, this video is definitely gonna be for you because we're gonna talk about what intermittent fasting is, why it's something I don't recommend and why it's very much a diet and why the supposed health benefits are not exactly the full picture of what they say they are. But before we dive into things, let me introduce myself. My name is Katherine Metzelar. I'm a registered dietitian, certified intuitive eating counselor here to help you create peace with food and your body so that all of it takes up less headspace and you can live your life with more presence, abundance, and freedom. So what exactly is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is not talking about and not related to the normal amount of fasting that you would experience while you're sleeping. This pertains to specific hours that extend the amount that you are fasting either in the morning or in the evening or a combination of both and thus limit the amount of permissible time that you are allowed to eat. So usually there's an hour range in which it's okay to eat food according to intermittent fasting. And then once that's done, you're done for the evening up until a certain time in the morning in the next day. Before we dive into the reasons why intermittent fasting might not be the best fit for you and likely why I would not recommend it, I wanna talk about why if your relationship with food is chaotic currently and or it has been in the past, why intermittent fasting might feel really appealing to you. And there are two main reasons. One is that it often provides a felt sense of structure for those that are experiencing chaotic eating and not very structured eating. You've got permission to eat from one time to another, there's structure, there's guardrails, it feels contained and that can feel like a relief. The second reason is because it often gives people permission to eat. And if you're feeling like you don't have permission to eat, going on a diet like that often leads people to feeling like they finally have permission to eat within that window. Nonetheless, it still allows them to feel a greater sense of freedom around and permission around eating. And with that said, I wanna offer five reasons why you don't need to be intermittent fasting and some serious things that you should consider before you engage in a diet like this. So I know I said a moment ago, if you're feeling chaotic with food, if food is feeling really chaotic, that sometimes intermittent fasting can help with this. There is a flip side to this coin, which is oftentimes both in practice for me, what I've seen, what people describe, is that intermittent fasting can often cause us to feel even more out of control and for food to feel even more chaotic. This is because of the very specific parameters around timing of when you can eat. And the reason why I say that is because this leads to a lot of binging behaviors. When we don't know that we're gonna have consistent access to food, when our food is restricted, a very common cycle to get stuck in is what we call the binge restrict shame cycle. So we binge on something, we feel shame and guilt about it, and then we restrict again. And so for a lot of people, intermittent fasting can lead to, because of the very rigid specific guidelines around timing, it can lead to them feeling even more chaotic around food over time. The second reason is that intermittent fasting is a diet through and through. And what I mean by this is that it fosters a scarcity mentality with food and for many often leads to them not being nourished enough, not getting enough food during their waking hours. This is because it is much harder to meet your body's nutrient needs 
during a much smaller window. Once you're outside of that window, you are not allowed to eat. And therefore, for a lot of people, they end up not eating enough to support their body's energy needs. The third reason is that it disrupts hunger and fullness. Not only are you required to override signals of both fullness and hunger when you're intermittent fasting, it also can dull hunger and fullness signals while you're intermittent fasting. So let's talk about the first bit, why you are required to override hunger and fullness cues. This is because when you have a very small window to eat, most people will make sure that they get as much food as they can get in, rightfully so, during that window. And what happens? If you're full, you're likely going to override that fullness feeling because you know you have a deadline, you know the time in which you can eat is going to end, so you override fullness, it makes sense. And the same thing goes for hunger. When you feel hungry outside of the window, you are expected to override it. What happens if you're hungry in the morning? What happens if you are hungry in the evening? You have to continuously practice overriding your body's cues. In addition to that, it also dulls your hunger and fullness cues because in order to produce those cues, we need to make sure we're getting food consistently and that we're getting enough food. And in the absence of those two things, we dull our hunger and fullness cues because they are hormones and in the absence of nourishment, our body is not going to produce them as strongly. The fourth reason is that it compromises your ability to trust your body. You start to really doubt, is this actually fullness? Is this actually hunger? Can I trust my body? And you start to think actually that there's something wrong with you or many people think this. There must be something wrong with me if I'm hungry outside of this window. And despite many people saying that intermittent fasting is intuitive or is in alignment with intuitive eating, it is not. There is nothing intuitive about only allowing yourself to eat for a narrow amount of time every day. And the fifth reason is that it problematically glorifies overriding and ignoring your hunger. It elevates it as this amazing feat that you are completing this amazing thing that you can do to ignore your hunger and only further perpetuates the messaging that you've already gotten, which is that you shouldn't trust your body, you shouldn't listen to your hunger, and in fact, you should be ignoring it at all costs. This is only in alignment with everything else related to diet culture, and this only further perpetuates this belief that it's something good, when in reality, your body can be trusted and your hunger is not lying to you. Not to mention, intermittent fasting completely negates an important conversation that needs to be had around people that are food insecure and end up fasting out of necessity and not out of choice. So I know it might seem enticing to you or maybe other people in your life to start intentionally not eating during certain times and extending your night fasting into the day. But honestly, this tends to lead to more disordered eating patterns for most people. While it is presented as being healthy, it's presented as being something positive in the long run, it leads to more chaos, more confusion around food, and leads to a deep distrust with your body. So if you are wanting to work on healing your relationship with food, if you're wanting to shift and change things in regards to your relationship with food as well as your relationship with your body, I would not recommend intermittent fasting. This is something that tends not to be healthy for our mental and physical well-being over time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, click like below, subscribe to my channel, and let me know what you thought. Have you tried intermittent fasting before? Do you have questions about it? Let me know below, and I will see you back here next week.